Are we live? Yes, we're live. All right. Is this working, our angle? We've got a right angle here and everything? Relatively. Uh, are you looking to see? I was curious what you were doing over here. <laughs> anyway. I'm hey, pulling up the feed so that we can actually see the reading. All most written excellent. Easier. Most excellent. Give us a second to totally Thank get set you. up. But I will say, hail. This is, is Thrad. I don't want to be rude to anybody out here who might be watching. I've got a beer that you may not be able to get in all regions. It is a Texas beer, or I shouldn't say beer, actually a, uh, a Hefe uh, Weissen, or a uh, he he Hefe Weissen, or however you want to pronounce it, Weissen, is a uh, ale, technically. Normally 50% wheat or 70% wheat. I'm not sure how much on this one. This is a Texas brew, and it is Weiss, or Weissen Easy, and it is a Hefe Weissen, and it's from Shiner Bach, or uh, Shiner Beer, or I shouldn't say Bach, that's a specific type of beer they make in Texas. It uh, has an excellent thing about it. It's only 95 calories. So if you do a low carb diet or a keto diet like we do, it's excellent because it's only 3.5 carbs, I believe, for an entire bottle like this and 95 calories. But it's full of flavor. It's not filtered at all, as far as I can tell. And it has that nice yeasty flavor because hefe, uh, hefe means yeast and weissen means wheat. Uh, in German, so it has a nice wheat flavor and it has a nice yeasty flavor, but this has something unique to uh, Texas and it's brewed during the summer. I think it's seasonal. I'm not sure. Hopefully they'll make it uh, more often than just seasonal. It has uh, dewberries in it and dewberries are berries that are indigenous to Texas a lot. Uh, people eat them here and they're kind of a purplish or whitish berry. They're very, very, very good. Kind of like a raspberry akin to a raspberry has an excellent flavor. I have tasted it before, but I'm going to review it again tonight because it's been a while since I've got to drink it. And I thought it would be fun to come on and do something while I answer questions other than I could just come on and say, hey, this is Thrand and I'm here to do a Q&A. Now, I'd like to come on and at least do something fun with y'all. And y'all can have something to drink with me as well. And yes, Merlin's with Thrand's eat, drank the Bach before. Unfortunately, I don't actually drink beer, so I'm not going to try any of these. Using this slick here. Oh, yeah. He loves his glasses, so do I. Now, this is a proper beer glass. I mean, you could use a mug or something like that, but I figure this beer glass is excellent. You get to see the color and everything in the video. And like I said, this is Shiner Weiss and Easy, or Weiss and Easy, depending on how you pronounce it. And it is a Hefe Weissen, or a yeasty wheat beer. And it's excellent. I have had it before. We'll go ahead and start pouring. How many viewers do we have right now? Uh, seven right now. Five seven. times up. Hail to everyone. And Merlin's is the main person talking to us. The greetings to Canada from Texas, low bro. Hail to Canada? Yeah. I'm going to get uh, info from uh, Caddy because she's the one watching the messages. It's easier for her to watch them or relay them to me. If Hail anybody... Southern Nordic. Hail Southern Nordic. I'll take a sip here. We will admit at this point... The reason why the lack of videos is we're actually having a hard time getting a hold of some of the materials we normally use. Every store in town is sold out of our coconuts. Yeah, I have to get proper sized coconuts. They're about the size of a human skull. And we have to have them extremely fresh. And then what we do with them is when we actually use them and they're put into the gel, they have to set and cure as well. So the problem is if I try to buy them ahead of time and we don't use them, uh, coconuts tend to rot and go bad. And surprisingly enough, due to the plague, I know we can't talk a lot about that on here because YouTube doesn't like people talking about everything, but uh, due to the plague going on and uh, what's happening, you can't find coconuts. For some reason, everyone bought up all the coconuts. I mean, it's almost like the toilet paper. I don't understand why there's no coconuts, but there's no coconuts at the current time. We've been trying and trying. And I have a video, speaking of uh, uh, my good friend... Uh, if I can even think clearly right here. After Roland? Taking this. Yeah, Roland Rosecca. Uh, he loves uh, uh, Hefe Weissens. And uh, he loved uh, Blue Moon when he was here with the uh, citrus orange flavor, uh, the wheat one. And uh, we drink that when we were up in Minnesota quite a bit. He'd probably love this one, I bet, with the dewberry flavor. It's a little, I like it better than the citrus, if you, if you ask me. And um, as, as I'm reviewing this, I will say that I had a video for him, and it was to test a technique so I don't get it. Out of sequence here, where you come over and it's like a little hit with the sword. It's done in such a way it's kind of like rocking a violin arm or something. But when the sword comes down, it has so much tremendous power. It's unbelievable. I mean, he, he struck me with it when I was wearing a fencing mask. 
and I could feel the power. If I was wearing an SCA helmet, I'm sure I'd feel it as well, but it looks like he's not doing anything. So he wanted me to test the technique, and it could actually come around and hit you on the other side of the head if it's done properly, like kind of come over. And he wanted me to test it on the proper skull, uh, one of our analog basics gel heads, and see what kind of damage it would do to prove that even though it doesn't look like he's doing anything, and it's an effortless motion, but it's a, a very successful move and very uh, advantageous and could cause extreme damage and trauma, which uh, from getting hit with it, I can tell you, yeah, it will. Uh, but I want to do that for him, and I plan on getting that out, and I have a video of him teaching me how to do the move, move properly when we're up at uh, Allspoke Viking Martial Arts, and I had a good time learning it with him, but now I have to recreate that and try to actually cut through a, a skull or cleave through a skull, and then there's a finishing move where you come back around with it. So I really want to do that, but till I get the actual coconuts, it's going to be very difficult. I have ballistics gel, so we can do the mannequin that we have set up that we used in our bow videos, our, uh, our war bow videos, and um, make that, but we're not going to be able to do the heads until we get the coconuts. Somebody's asking about a karamfu. Uh, karambit. Karambit? Oh. oh, the wreckage cat, he says. The what? They... I can't see I'm that. apologizing. I can't necessarily translate the words exactly. Karamfu? Uh, back edge cut. He was asking. Oh, back edge cut. It, it is most certainly a back edge cut. Yeah, yeah. It, this is the technique he's talking about, the way you come up. And, or cram it. And it might be the way it's, it's a pronounced. back edge cut, and it can either come overhead or it can come off angle on the side of the head. And Roland just demonstrated the power. I do believe that this back, back edge cut, the way he actually does it, or false edge cut, which is kind of a misnomer there, double edged sword, a Viking age sword that he does it with. I believe it will definitely cut through the skull. We're going to find out, and that's going to be a lot of fun. But like I said, until I get the proper analog that we normally use to compare it to other sword cuts and other sword uh, uh, techniques, we won't know. And we do have ballistics gel. Like I said, I have that to one side, but I just haven't been able to get any actual uh, coconuts at the current time. And um, travel with, we didn't make the Cassie sword. It was sent to us. The issue is that no, we we're not bladesmiths. We don't have the capabilities of our ancestors on creating the blades. Fran just has an affinity with blades, with knowing how they are used. I like I like the sword. Uh, the one is the Kasi blade is excellent, but it is EN forty five steel. Now it probably would not have been made out of EN forty five steel. Traditionally, if you went back far enough in the early 19th century, it was the earliest period it was made. Uh, but it still, I mean, could have been a very effective blade into the early uh, 19th century when it was still being used and used way before that. They used it before that as well. And the blade would have been made out of the best steel they could in India. And in India, is always famed for steel, so I'm sure the blade was always a very good blade to begin with. So I would say the EN45 is a good representation of it. I mean, even earlier sword making techniques that they're done probably perform about the same way and have just as good of edge, if mm -hmm. not better. If not better, to, to okay. correct myself, EN45 is not the greatest thing in the world. It's good, it's durable, but as for edges, it's a good edge, but it's not the absolute best edge that could possibly put on a pattern welded blade or a Damascus blade. No one's saying Karantha was the crooked strike. The crooked strike, meaning the false edge or the back edge. Yeah. So they start, yeah. Um, I, I thought you. I, I knew met, somebody asked me about karambits earlier today online, so I thought maybe it was him when you tried to pronounce it. So I apologize. I can't read it myself. I can't speak German that well. I'm sorry. I, I probably could have read it, but I can't see the screen from here. If you give me French or Japanese, I'll be a bit better off. Oh, as to go on with our beer review, not to change the subject because we are answering questions, but this is going to be a long beer review because we'll be answering questions. Anybody that asks me anything. Uh, this Shiner, uh, the Vice and Easy. Or it's a uh, Hefeweizen. It's an excellent beer. As for a beer, if you were just reviewing this as a beer itself, like this, comparing it to all the other wheat beers, I would say it probably has about a four, four and a half. I mean, I'm serious. I would give it a four, four and a half for flavor. Uh, it as being a Hefeweizen. And remember, this is unfiltered, and you can see how rich and thick this is. But remember, this is a low carb beer. So if you're going by low carb, or a light beer and having this kind of flavor, it's got a five or a six in my opinion. I'd have to give it a five or a six. If you're going for something that's going to keep you from gaining a lot of weight, but you're still going to be able to drink like you want to drink and enjoy the flavor, I don't think anybody else is making anything like this. Now, can you get it where you're at? I'm uncertain. I can't tell you if it's possible to get this 
I can't tell you if it's possible to get this in your location, but you could look up Shiner. Uh, it's in Shiner's in Texas, Shiner, Texas, and see if you can get a hold of the beer online. It's very plausible. You might be able to order a six pack over a case or something. And sorry, Caddy's getting interrupted here. This is a live feed, and we don't have a tripod. I'm using a cell phone because it's the easiest way that I can do these feeds, like I did when I was in Minnesota. And my reading computer just went offline. Mm. <laughs> Can you read on there? Yeah, it's just harder because it disappears faster. Can you get it back on? Um, suppose the internet just went down. <laughs> that's, why yes. I, that's why I was just asking our son if the internet just got knocked out. I don't know. It should not no, be because I'm power. online. And I'm uh, you're on. I'm on the phone. So the phone network. You can't right now. We are playing. We are live. You cannot right now. Sorry, Eric, son. Go check that. Good. Make sure it's plugged in now. I do apologize, guys. Please. I am at home, as everybody else is. Most people are, uh, I would say, oh, the cat knocked it out. quarantine or yes. what you call self isolation. I don't think it's necessarily quarantine unless you know you have the disease. Oh, that's fine. He can get stuck by the swords. Please. The cat went in the sword room. That's okay. Uh, yes, MB, I'm from New Zealand. in a sword room. <laughs> Yes. Cats are very nimble. I don't think he'll hurt, him, hurt himself. Yes, MB, I'm from New Zealand. Unfortunately, it sounds like our cat broke into our sword room over the back of the door and knocked our internet for the house off, which is what my um, computer that I was tracking everything's from. No, so it's going to be hard Hello for from Western, uh, Austria, uh, Western Aussie and Ottawa. Hey, Aussie. Are oh, they asking any questions? Or? Like I said, I would, give I this would a love four to and a half. Back. I would say four and a half. But if you were talking about this beer here as a just as a, a light beer or low carb beer, it doesn't taste anything like it. So um, me giving it a four or four and a half as a beer in general, and giving a five or a six, I say a six in the the light beer area. I mean, I, I don't think that's bragging because it's just very well done. Okay, I don't have anything like it. You've before. had a few questions. I apologize to these people. One second, Garrick. That's okay. It's okay. The, cat the kitty will come out. I hope. I'll find him later. Okay. No, go. Please. Guys. Iron Bat had wanted to know. No if one's supposed to come in here and you know that. Please go. Iron ahead. Bat was wanting to know if you were going to do a more English longsword technique stuff. Most and certainly. Can not. I? Before I forget. Travel with Paul. Yes, we are slightly aware about the situation with Cassie Land. However, we weren't exactly sure about that part. I'll show friend afterwards, mainly because unfortunately my computer's still lagging. Um, and Lobro also wants to know about your opinion of uh, Battle of uh, HMB slash IMCF slash ACL or Battle of the Nations Armored Combat. My opinion of it, to be honest, I would say it's like early uh, tournament combat when they were actually doing it not to kill each other. Remember, this is not the where you see people doing half sword and trying to stab into eye slots and into voiders, into uh, uh, gaps in the armor. We're talking about this was when you were pounding on each other, trying to prove to the other man that you were superior by landing a harder or more solid blow and unseating him and throwing him to the ground and proving your dominance. In that respect, yes, it is medieval combat. It's sport combat, just like the SCA is a sporting style combat. It's more extreme than the SCA, Society of Creator Necronism, but they are based on tourney. And even early tourney, or tourney, what would happen, early period people would go out and fight each other before they actually had it as a spectacle just to prove who was better and keep their skills up when it wasn't wartime. And then you would find out who was more dominant, who should be the leader, and who served who. But later on it became an actual thing where you had a stadium, people watching, and yeah, you, know, you need to get out of here. Sorry. He's, but he wants to help. Yeah, but anyway. So the thing is I see about it, it's it's got rules. I think early tournament had rules as well. That's why you had breakaway lances. That's why you had uh, great sword fights and they were in a ring because they weren't trying to kill the other man. Now, if you go back to judicial dueling, where you see people in full plate, and this was to the death, and God was deciding, or in the early period, the gods, but it was the god at the time period when they were doing the gladiatoria and so on, when you see the uh, depictions, 
in that event, then yes, that's when you would see the half sorting. You would see people cutting straps to the armor. They wouldn't be concerned with pounding on each other or throwing powerful blows and landing the most powerful blow or throwing the guy to the ground unless they were going to finish him. That was the whole point. They were trying to actually draw blood and kill the other man or make him yield, which in most cases he'd be executed anyway. So that would be battlefield combat when you see the manners, when you see the half sword and so on. That was techniques to kill the other man. Whereas battle nation stuff based on later century tournament that was more of a sport. And it was a sporting event to entertain and to practice. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's some training with weapons. But the goal was not to kill the man, it was just to prove dominance or superiority and have him yield to you. Because basically you beat him up like boxing. But I mean, people did get killed. People do get hurt. People get hurt in Battle of the Nations as well. So, yes, I give it credit, but it's not it, its not the same as life or death. But then again, it is good training. So, and I believe that people should do a little bit of everything. You should enjoy your combat and practice different forms. Um, I am not pleased, guys. Guys, Alar, you're instigating this and keeping it going on. Would you please go? Yeah, this go is back. not professional. I thought everybody's going to leave me alone. Why are you supposed to be... I'm taking you off the computers right now if you don't go back on. Meow, go back to watching Asterix, please. We gave you the computer. Meow, yeah, go back to watching Asterix. Or YouTube. Sorry, guys. I did not expect this. I was trying to find a specific time, and I thought I had pacified the uh, heathen barbarians. The heathen barbarians are not pacified. Probably should give them beer. <laughs> Or something, axes or something, let them go outside and chop something no, out. Me. No, we wouldn't actually do that, that's a joke. No, um, one person was asking about the Nepali Gurkha knife, and yes, we actually keep it in the truck or oh, yeah, in the we, house at times. The, the Gurkha knife or the... We, apolo the we do apologize about the kids. Unfortunately, being housebound is not good for a bunch of little boys. And it's difficult for me to make videos as well. We can't get them away from us long enough to do some videos, and the boys will come out sometimes while we're doing videos and kind of stand back and stay in a safe location and watch. But then they also want to put input in, so it makes it very difficult to make a professional video where you don't all of a sudden have one of them cheering or giving you their opinion in the middle of it, standing next to the caddy while she's filming it. Yes, but <laughs> travel with... These are the kids who think that they're Vikings along with their father. Yeah, and to reiterate, in case somebody's joined in just now, uh, reviewing uh, Shiner's uh, Weissen Easy, which is a Hefe Weissen, or a wheat uh, beer, which is a, a, uh, a, I guess, a yeast wheat beer in German. And uh, it is a light beer. This is done by Shiner. It's got the, um, it's got the uh, dewberries in it, which is a dewberry flavor instead of a citrus flavor like Blue Moon. But it's very much like Blue Moon, but only 95 calories, and it's 3.5 calories for a bottle of 12 ounce serving, I believe. Tra That's excellent. Travel, it's great until they find Mummy's hidden hot throwing knives. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Garrick loves throwing Randall Bowe McNee's uh, star throwing buoy. That's now his favorite throwing knife, and I supervise him. But I let him throw it at our targets outside, and he actually sticks it repetitively. Now, is it a super powerful throw? No, but it's he's getting skillful at throwing it, getting the proper... Uh, revolution and sticking in the target which is amazing to me we will not travel we will not allow them to have the weapons unsupervised yeah they don't do anything like that without us there just like pellet guns we've been having some fun with those and stuff as well teaching them how to shoot you know while we're in quarantine or I should say quarantine it's actually since we don't believe we have the disease self-isolation the only time there was an unsupervised event, the weapon was taken away rather quickly, and it was about two years ago, three years ago. I think one of the boys got a hold of one of the, um... Uh, I don't remember. Etched blades. Oh, yeah. Meow got a hold of it when he was about three years old and tried to take off of it and had it removed from his possession rather quickly. No, oh, yeah, he was excited that he found it. I don't think it was, that was then I changed. Yes, but unfortunately, then I had to change where we kept the blades. Uh, yeah, well, he got smart enough to figure it out. Then. Yeah, but now we do. And and most of the boys will not mess with blades. To be honest with you, uh, I have a cut on the back of my right hand, and the two older boys saw me get cut, and one of them brought me a towel when I was bleeding, and this was years ago, and it was shooting a video. I actually got yeah, cut. Well, and I'm had stitches. Up. Yeah, so they are scared to death. If you say something sharp, they don't want to hold it. Don't they? The older boys. They're, they're scared of it. 
Unless it's a throwing blade. Yeah, unless it's not, like Garrick's throwing blade is not that sharp. It's a throwing blade. It's not designed to be a weapon, per se. It's something to practice with, to throw. It's a big, wide blade. Big, wide throwing knives, just so everybody knows. When you see the big, wide throwing blades, and you see the uh, expert, meow. It's fun. Go this way. No, go. He's trying to find the cat. You're okay. Yeah, the but cat's in my room. The big, wide throwing blades are done that for, for a reason, especially with the very sharp point. I don't know if you understand the shape of that, but kind of like a, uh, uh, you know, where you've got the big wide front to it. Those are designed not to hurt people if they hit them. Blades are designed to actually kill people or injure people. You'll notice like the old Bosherikin or the uh, Kogatana that possibly could have been thrown and different stuff like the Japanese use are normally sharp, but they're long blades and they're skinny to pierce. Well, the big wide blade, when it's not real sharp, it's not going to pierce as deep if it hits an actual living person or something. Not to say it's safe. They're not safe by any means, but they're not so sharp they're going to cut you if you run your finger along the edge, but they're still able to stick in a target. They're good for training and practice, and they're balanced well that way. They knocked the house Wi-Fi off again. No, they did yeah, I don't know why they're doing this just while we're online. I think the cat's doing it. Not so sure if we're going to be watching a movie. With um, this. We <laughs> have a 22 long rifle for a gun, but we have stronger two. Fran would probably be willing to travel to the Kasi land and discover the origin of the blade. The problem is a lot of the time the cost. Yeah, I would love to travel everywhere. I have people uh, offering me uh, Ian Coot, uh, which is one of the long bowmen online that was uh, talking with me over the video I did helping Shad out, trying to prove whether that draw was plausible or not, putting it on the right side and drawing like Lars Anderson, which I was actually able to draw longer than I ever did before my 130 pound bow and get it all the way back on 32 inches. Although, tr trust me, I felt that in my back. Trust me, I still feel that in my back after doing that in the video. That's why I was surprised towards the end of the video I was able to do it and I did that at the intro when I was putting it all together. Uh, but the whole thing to say is he wants us to come to England just like uh, just like my good friend uh, Neil Burge wants me to come to England. Neil wants me to come there for Bronze Museum and he's offered to, to set me up there if I come up there and help me go see the curators and everything in the Bronze exhibit that they're going to be in. Mama, so, and and Ian Coot around. would like me to go up there to where yeah. he's at and actually shoot long bows with them. We're talking about real U bows, Mary Rose style bows that are made that people have and get to experiment with those. And those would be excellent as well to go up there and see them shoot and to actually be able to shoot bows with them. And I could probably do that all together, but the trick is paying for the trip there. And of course, right now, I don't think anybody would grant us access to leave the States nor would we probably want to when we go on unfamiliar territory or... <laughs> We might catch uh, the plague. So okay, Merlin's the knife. Most of the knives, other than the Randall Bow McNeese throwing knife that we use, are about a hand width size for learning on the throw. The kids are also very strictly taught about the basics of safety. You don't throw if anyone's in front of it, you. You don't throw near anything that you don't want to kill. You stand a decent distance back so it can't bounce back at you, and so on. And you pay very close attention. They've been taught the same thing about guns and that they're not allowed to as well. Uh, yes, we're having a major challenge with the kids today. Unfortunately, they never want to sleep when they're actually meant to be asleep and be awake when they need to be doing school during the day for me. And I'll reiterate the Shiner Vice and Easy is a Hefe Vice. And like I said, I'm not doing it for the company or anything, I'm just doing it for me. But just so everybody's tuned in, I am reviewing the. The actual ale, because uh, a Hefe Weissen is an ale. It means a, uh, a wheat ale. And uh, it's excellent. It's, this was a low carb one. Like I said, I would give it a four, four and a half as a beer in general. But as a uh, light or low carb beer, it is definitely, like I said, a five and a half or a six. It's over the scale. Because it not being filtered and having this much flavor and being like a blue moon, yet being that low carb, because blue moon is full of carbohydrates and calories it is i mean it's like eating bread more like eating a couple of slices of bread just with your beer this is excellent I mean, okay. you can't do any better than that merlins you wanted to know on verdict for the bows for the tots we actually have a 15 pound um longbow that we have for our eight-year-old unfortunately i have to order a new bow stringing because 
God knows what he did with the last one. Yeah, game. he has practice points for it and he shoots into cardboard. So. I have a big box full of oh, stuff full of shopping bags. So no matter how much they say they're not reusable, I swear they are. Yeah, she puts them in there to, to catch the arrows inside the... Put enough of them in there works fine for light bows like that. The... He also has multiple play bows and stuff like that. No, you're not allowed to eat those. Those are for the cupcakes. We're going to make cupcakes tomorrow. Sorry, okay? guys. I, I apologize. They know we're in a lot. This is a live video of people watching us. You do remember that, right, Garrick? Or are you... Tell a lot of stuff eating the dang icing. Please, icy. dude. Sorry, sound like that's my 80s coming out. Please, dude. Yeah, the 10-year-old and the 8-year-old got into the icing and the sprinkles and are trying to eat them all before we make cupcakes tomorrow. Yeah. If anybody has any questions, hopefully she's catching them. Is there anything? I am. That's why I wanted the other one. Amaro. Uh, I hope that's how it's pronounced. Hello and hail. Hail. Hail, Maro, you said? Uh, we, Longbro, we would love to make an ash or you bow. The only issue is it is difficult. I have been getting them uh, on uh, eBay. I don't know if we can get that white owl, actually. Archie Bowman is who I've been getting them from, and he does bows that are laminate composites, but I do have a self bow. My 130-pound bow is made of hickory. Hickory is not the best wood, it's not the most liveliest wood, uh, but it makes a good long bone. It's something you can use comparable to ash, not to you, but it's comparable more to an ash bow, would be the hickory. Something in the States that we can use that's, that's more affordable. I hate to say cheap, because his bows aren't cheap. They're, they're affordable, and uh, he guarantees them. He will actually uh, replace it if something goes wrong with it. But just to let you know that, yeah, it, uh, Archie Bowman, uh, he's a uh, long bowman, or uh, archer that does uh, archery and uh, like as in, as in court archery. And uh, yeah, he does English longbows that are sanctioned by the English Longbow Society if at all requirements. So you can look him up on eBay. I don't know how many bows he has right now. He's been selling quite a few because uh, Shad and I both used bows from him and showed they perform very well. And they're some of our favorite bows because. Like I said, they're affordable enough. We can get them here. I can get them in the states, and he can get them in Australia easy enough. Okay, without Mel spending a thousand dollars for one boat. Merlin, I'll look into that brew for friend. Like I said, I don't really drink beer right now. I'm drinking a vodka behind the screen, honestly, <laughs> mixed with a, a flavored caffeinated water. <laughs> but to be to be honest, uh, I don't know if this is actually good with this virus thing around the plague. But uh, it definitely helps the nerves. That's all I can say. Drinking right now helps the nerves, especially stuck in the house with the eating barbarians. Put that back in the fridge where it belongs before I beat you. I was the one to take it out. We were gonna no, make, that's for the cupcakes. We were going to make devil's food cupcakes for you guys in the next few days, remember? Sorry, sorry I apologize, guys. Here comes I apologize the to everyone out there viewing that we're getting interrupted. And they know we're live, which they, I guess... Actually, he may not have. enough. He may not have. Hmm. Well, at least it's like being at the house with us. He came by to visit, and that's something that um, he wants to do right now. He's having a hard time. Okay. <laughs> Pocholo, thank you, and we will do as best as we can. However, as we've said before, we are having some issues with supply chain currently. Um, chaos... Hey, whatever you like to drink is the most important thing at this time, mainly because at least it keeps you from stressing out too much. That's what I was saying. I, they, they say it might weaken the immune system. All I know is I've been drinking for years. I don't think it actually hurt the immune system. I mean, maybe it did and I didn't know it, but it definitely helps with the nerves. I wouldn't advise getting uh, plastered, you know, and having a hangover or something, but if you're just drinking to relax after a good meal Crap. or something, I'll hide I hit the wrong button. Right now, to <laughs> relieve a little stress if you're able to do it. Yeah, him and his 12 or 13 friends live right now. How many do we have on? 15. 15? I have 15. <laughs> hey, drinking is fun. I hate this damn laptop. It's not working right? No, it keeps cutting in and out. Watch out with the camera because I, I don't know how much I'm bobbing. Look at your image over there and see how much. If you can tell. The problem is, what barely looks like bobbing on the screen on the camera is a lot more. 
Right, and the idea here is we're reviewing the Shiner Vice and Easy, and the reason it's in Easy is it's actually a low carb beer, 3.5 carbs per serving, or per 12 ounce, if you get a bottle, not a pint, and it's 95 calories, but this is unfiltered wheat beer, and it has the yeast in there unfiltered and the wheat itself, so it's excellent. I don't know how to explain it. It has the same type of flavor as a Blue Moon, but instead of being a citrus aftertone, it's made with real dewberries from Texas. Like I said, I don't know if anybody can get that if you're not here in the States. I know most of my viewers are all around the world, which I enjoy that and love that very much. And I think uh, Laura's trying to tell everybody to, to hit the like button. I hope yeah, he is. He's doing, not flipping everyone off. No, he was giving a thumbs up <laughs> yeah, to like button. But uh, I was going to say, if you can get a hold of this beer, I highly recommend it, especially if you eat Do uh, not put your hand in front of the keto, camera. Which we do keto, boring on carnivore. I mean, I say boring right on that. Especially right now, we've had a hard time getting exactly what we need, so we just eat whatever we can that is not too high in carbs and it's mostly meat and grease, I guess, fat. Unfortunately, yes, our sons do love the normal kitty-like YouTube channels where every episode it's hit the like and the notification button and all that. And so technically, you're not even supposed to do that by the, the Yuma. If you read it, you're not allowed to tell people to like your video and subscribe. and all. That. You're not supposed to technically be pushing that. But, I mean, if you all heard that and did it, that's fine by me. <laughs> But because they hear it all the time, they want to do it for Dad. Yeah. They want to help him out. Do you want to go in and say hi? Hi. Okay, now please go. Okay. Tea. Go steal Dad's tea. Yeah. They love iced tea down here. We're in Texas, so we it's iced tea. So that's tea. Thanks there goes your tea. Done your job. Telling everybody to like they they saw you. Now, please uh, let us talk so we don't be rude to anybody and miss a message. Okay. Unfortunately, no one's really messaging right now. I don't know what to say other than update them on what's going on with the videos. Okay. We haven't got the videos out with any heads or analog heads because we don't have the coconuts. I already brought that up earlier. Uh, we plan on testing the technique out as soon as we can. That is a back edge cut or false edge cut and Roland Varzeka style of doing it. There's other people who do it in other ways. There's ways we can come over. But the way he does it is come up and yeah, I don't know how to explain it. I'd have to demonstrate it and it'll actually be him showing me live. I have video from Minnesota and he did Minnesota and also Viking martial arts where he teaches me the technique. He's in the video, so it'll be like a collaboration video for the first half of the video. The last part will be me testing it on my mediums. And I'm thinking using the analog ballistics gel head and using some rolled wet newspaper because you can't bring this all the way around. So we'll see what that does as well. So it's going to be a lot of fun to see if that light technique, and when I say light, it looks like you're not putting any effort into it. If the method he uses to perform the technique delivers the power that he says it does. And I believe it does, so it's going to be a lot of fun. If I get a chance, but with the social distancing thing, they've called off all fighter practices, because a lot of people know I do go to SCA and fight in the Society of Creative Anachronism, even though it has more of a context for it. Like you were saying, instead of HEMA, Historical European Martial Arts, it's more like going out to the M1 matches or the Battle of the Nations, and they actually recruit people from there. One of my good friends on the American team, uh, shout out to Randy Winkle, Randy Wrinkle, if I can say it right, Randy Wrinkle. Uh, yeah, I'm, I've been drinking the ale, lad, so forget me if you're out there. But he's Should a I big, tell him the truth? Big my giant peanut? redhead that can bench over 500 pounds, and yes, he's part of the team. I think he's gray now. But he used to fight with us down here in Corpus Christi, Texas, at the Shire City ones. And he is part of Battle of the Nations now. So that's where they recruited him from, from our, our, our ranks, pretty much, because they get good fighters out of there for that type of tournament fighting. But I would go out and test that technique on some people wearing their uh, SCA helms, which would be awesome, and see what they say about the impact. And still test it on the mediums, but I don't know. I plan on doing that. I may not be able to do it with the social distancing and having no fighter practices. And, and, unless I could train Caddy to do it well enough to <laughs> her do it, or do it to her, which I don't want to get the results. Because if I hit her and it is good, I'm probably going to be kicked in the, uh, I need a cod piece. Let's put that way. I would need a cod piece. More than one. More than uh, one. Actually, that particular child was in a few of the videos as a toddler, hiding in one of the windows originally. He used to love watching his father do it, working on the videos when we first started the channel. 
I first started the channel to argue with David Deadly's warrior. Yes, but they're asking about Allah being a toddler. Yeah, he was. There was a few videos that we had to throw out because he was a little bit closer. Um, Okay. I don't know if Francine's Gladiatoria lockdown challenges as yet. If not, we'll have a look into it ASAP. Oh, Stella Gladiatoria's lockdown challenge where you cut Cutting up. challenge. Yeah, where you cut up with the uh, saber cut. I guess. Cut. Yeah, I saw it. I even messaged him back saying that I would try it. I do plan on trying that. If you want, I might try that tomorrow. And uh, the sword I might try it with, believe it or not, you'd expect me to use a Viking sword. I might use one of my long swords that I think is really well balanced, but I can use one-handed because you need a very thin profile on the blade for that to work very well. The way he cut it, you need a very thin profile on the blade so and a very sharp blade. So I have just the blade, I believe, which I think some of you may know the one I'm talking about. It is a long sword, a great one-handed as well because it's got a shorter blade that was used recently. Yes. The shorter blade, and I will cut it, and I bet you it will work right off. I bet, I bet we would I love to do a recent cut, though, rather than just an old cut Tim space. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm having trouble with your name. I'll do that as a reply to Scott Gladiatoria, too. Matt Easton, Matt Easton's a friend of mine, so um, yeah, well, I will okay. do that cut, and I'll do no, that bro. blade. If you haven't figured it out, honestly, friends, favorite type of shield is the type that's sitting behind him generally he prefers about a three foot round thank you team space oh tsm i'm sorry i've been drinking i do have some more footage that i'll be putting out from egan minnesota and i haven't got to edit it yet i should have already done it but some of it well, i'm going to put up on patreon and it's because it is the class itself and i don't think it's fair to give Roland's class away for free but if you donate at least a dollar a month, I don't know what it's tight right now, so it's hard. I'll try to put some out before I release it about the, the uh, fighting up there, but I want to release a video where it shows us practicing and me fighting Roland style, because everybody talks about how Roland style is so different. But it'll be me with different people, me with Roland, and us just in class fighting. I wanted to release a video, have an intro for that, and let everybody see what it looks like, just a sparring. I think they would really enjoy that, just seeing the sparring as it happens live. But you know, with with uh, they're not sharps. They're they're just hema style blades, and they're actually steel a lot of times. And we're fighting with them, and I think you'd enjoy it. And the shield fencing and the way it looks, because it looks different with different individuals. Roland makes it look one way with the people he practices with, but then when you see other people doing it, then you get to see the different characteristics of everybody's style. So I think it'd be fun. Uh, Lowbro friend would know more about the SCA events in America, mainly because he's the one who's actually been to stuff like Golf War and stuff like that. They're cancelled. They don't Unfortunately, have Unfortunately, yes, they've all been cancelled with the um, virus currently. Um, Dumbay Boxing. Somebody mentioned it a little bit back. I'm sorry about it only going back to this now. But they said that it would be an interesting way to get bridge gap between a weapon and an unarmed sparring too. A oh, bridge a gap between weapon and arm sparring? Yeah, like in between? Like grappling to? Uh, bridging the weapon. No, bridging the gap. But excuse our cat, please. He, he was a neighborhood. He wants to come for the. Is this good ale? I want the cat's opinion. Is it good? He was a neighborhood I think he stray. Liked it. Our ch- uh, darling kids decided to try tame him recently along with my help. <laughs> Thank you. The kids have been calling him Tiger's Eye. And just to continue our review, so the nose review, um, on the Shiner Vice and Easy, it is good, a good ale if, you, if you're all interested in it. And it's a light beer, and it does not taste like one. So. We would love to get more of the Midas touch, but unfortunately, it is. A, Fran likes to go with the lower card beers nowadays. The Dogfish Head Midas touch is hard to find around here. Yeah, I don't know that why. Too. It's very difficult. They even had one for a while um, that was based on a Spartan brew, and I can't find it anymore. I wanted it originally. Dumbe has a left hand grappling only and right hand strikes only star. Okay. And yeah, I don't know if it was regional amateur super. Uh, sorry, not regional. A um, specific time period amateur super fan. We have been having a hard time with it recently and finding it. Left is shield, right is spear, and I'm guessing it'd be the same left as unarmed and right is your um, blade, basically. About right, Chaos Omega? 
And hello, amateur super fan from me too. Hell, uh, amateur super fan. Oh no, he said hi to me, not you. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's talking to Kay. Sorry, I'm teasing. Yeah, but like I said, just to reiterate, <laughs> anybody just tuned in, because I hate that when you, oh, it's a review and what's going on. This is a Shiner Vice and Easy. And uh, like I said, I give it a four, four and a half as a beer in general, but it's a light beer, only 3.5 carbs for 12 ounce, uh, 95 calories. And it has the flavor of a Blue Moon, full flavor, unfiltered uh, uh, Hefeweizen. And yeah, it's excellent. It, it's I'd give it a, a six if it was um, just a low carb beer because there's nothing like this. In the amateur, we are looking for older style meads and stuff like that as well. The only one we've found recently, unfortunately, we don't know how period it'd be, is a dry mead from Charm City Meadworks. We Charm City Meadworks, it's excellent. They make we good tried meads. The, Baltimore, believe it or not. We tried the Viking blood, but for the um, level of alcohol it's got, it's shocking that it has the amount of sweetness it has. Yes, yeah, 90% alcohol and it is sickeningly sweet. Now, for if us. you want a dessert, Mead, meat, or meow. Uh, it's excellent for that if you want something that's dessert and you can't taste the alcohol and it's very, very inebriating. I'm sorry, it will get you drunk. Um, friend has made a mead before. Unfortunately, he has not made it commercially just for me, normally. Yeah, I used to make uh, caddy a mead, and yes, it was an old recipe. And that's what got me about them saying that's a 17th century recipe on the Viking blood, uh, the Ginger blood, or whatever, the dance meat. Uh, the problem I had with it is 19% alcohol and it being that sweet. Uh, there is a 17th century recipe that calls for taking beer and this does have hops in it, the Viking blood that we reviewed. And you re-ferment it after you fermented the beer or wine all the way out with honey in it. Which maybe, but I don't think that. I think it's a cordial. And if people understand what cord cordials are in the 17th century, they had already started making uh, whiskeys. They started distilling uh, alcohols and making vodkas and stuff and being able to fortify stuff. So since you can fortify stuff, uh, it may be very well a brewed and fortified meat. So uh, what Green wants to know if you've ever tried any Swedish beers. Swedish beers. Uh, I'm trying to think that's what's completely Swedish. If he has any suggestions on names, I could tell him if I if I remember tasting. I'm thinking, I have drank a lot of Vikings different beers and ales and brews of all types. Depending on the time period, the Vikings and the Germans could have been actually very closely related if you've ever looked at the languages. Oh, they, they were the in phonics. theory. In theory, if you're talking about the early migrational age. Yes, but the phonics are very similar. Yeah. But we don't Not the know. same tribes, but yeah, they were similar. Like the same uh, ideals and brewing and yeah. Um, Woodgren is saying Maristad North Norland's Graal. Oh, uh, Norland's Gold? Don't believe I tried Krebs it. Blah. I'm I trying my best on language. Yeah, I, I have like to apologize. I, if I could see it, I'd probably pronounce it a little better, but the point is, I don't, it doesn't sound familiar. I would go, oh, you mean? With the funny eye. And which one is it? The funny eye. I'm being able to figure out how to pronounce the eye with the little circle above it. Okay, but what is the name? Krebs Blah. Those, I don't and think hello, I've tried King that I don't think I've tried those, unfortunately. I apologize. I would. It I also could. depends whether they even import to our region. I will look through the messages, and if I can get a hold of any of those, I will, and maybe do it reviewable. And right now, one of our places here, we have a place called BJ's Pizza, and believe it or not, they have every import, no demand almost. I mean, that's what they pride themselves on. You go in there, and you can grab anything off the shelf from all around the world. And they have a club where each time you go in and buy a different one, you get points and then you get them towards more beers and stuff. But needless to say, uh, I think they have carry out right now. I don't think they ever had delivery. And uh, I don't think you can, uh, you might be able to get beer from there, but I doubt it. Why did the cat break most, this time? I don't know. But most of the, most of the locations uh, no, can sell beer no sealed. But I don't know if BJ's is even open. It's a mom and pop pizza parlor. Unfortunately, amateur super fan, they're not on tap. Most of the time they always sell bottles, but you can pick anyway. Mo, <laughs> we'll have a look into those two, uh, Woodgren. I'll remember your name, I hope. 
We can go back will through here, look at the messages. You can. It ends, and I can look up any of the ales or beers that they've suggested. And, and yeah, I will. I will oh, try I'll, I'll remember the name somewhat. I'll admit that. Thank you, Chaos. What, what does he say? And yes, what on is Odin. Warden is Odin. He's a um, uh, slightly King, different variation uh, because of the Saxons' view of him and the, the Scandinavian view, but theoretically they're the same. I mean, in all essence. So people try to act like one's a little darker than the other one, or vice versa, but I mean, in, in all in all, they just have a little more mythos or story added to it, but you can pretty much take both of them and blend them together and get a good view of the uh, archetype of God figure himself. King Gif. King, or should I say fatherly figure? King Can figure. I? King Gif. I'm filming, this is Kathy, aka Fran's wife. I'm originally from New Zealand. I've spent time in Australia and America with a little bit of time in Japan, but I also have a slightly bastardized accent due to the fact that my grandmother, who spent a lot of my childhood around me, was English. Oh, talking, speaking of Japan, uh, we do have the Kikogani doll. Which and is, the Naginata still needs to yeah, come up. The Kikogani doll, I have a crossover, which he just got over the illness. I don't know if it was the one. He doesn't know either, Metatron or Raffaello. Uh, but we plan on doing a crossover with an actual proper, proper, uh, you know, I guess, mobility test. Because he's going to do his form of mobility test and I'll do mine, but we need to go out on location to do it. Now, I'm not 100% sure. I know you can go exercise. So if Caddy went out there with me and she was filming me and I was running around in it, I don't know if I could do that. I know that Raffaello can. And I don't think it would be fair to him if I did a video of mobility and then went into the actual testing of the Kikogani Do, which is kind of like a Japanese brigadine with plates, little hexagonal squares. I don't know if that would be really fair, so I'm not going to do that. And uh, I also have the Naginata, which I have a Naginata. Uh, from Dragon Song Forge that was given to me last time. Believe it or not, it's been since. Uh, it's a lot. The long. computer time ran yeah. out. Huh? <laughs> the computer okay. time ran out. I understand, but they still need to leave the song for a second. I wanted to explain that Naginata. I have a Naginata that I will test. And I actually got it when Adrian Paul was down here last time, which was two years ago. So I need to get something out with that. Definitely. Which I am working on some of the routines that we use for the women as well. Due and to the fact that the Naginata was a known women's routine for self-defense of the home when the men were gone. A lot. He's bored. The computer's just shut off. No, I understand, but what I'm Boys, go watch TV in the living room, please. Which is being rude. I don't like being rude to people, guys. <laughs> please. The na Naginata uh, was given to me by Rob from Dragon Song Forge. But uh, Ron's con downsized greatly. He didn't come down here. They didn't pay him last time he was there, give him the right spot that he wanted. Um, so I'm not going to argue about it or anything, but he didn't want me to put the video out until he was coming back down. So that's why we did end up doing it last time, and it fell right when I went to Minnesota. Garrett. So otherwise, that video would have already been out Allah. for them. Allah, they said hi to you. And the kid and our uh, kid just how many people do we ran off of the right now? one kid just ran off of the remote from the other kid. This is very unprofessional, guys. I don't other channels don't have this problem, and I wish you would leave me alone. Yeah, I actually until we're done. A lot Please of the other watch. channels that don't have this problem don't have children at all. I know this. I know, Allah took the remote. We're going to watch a movie in a little bit as soon as we're done here. And I'm sitting here trying to talk to people and I'm trying to see what they're saying to me. Um, the way I find out is Caddy tells me, and you guys cannot come in the video. Please. But he wants to get help from Allah or to get the remote. Please, from guys. We may have to just go now. We're all going to they say, they, most of them are saying all good. Okay, no, be sorry. Kids. I do apologize. I don't know how many people we have here. They I'm are trying husbands. to warn people ahead of time so you all might get a chance to come on. Uh, we were looking at either uh, watching Alita Battle 